and welcome to virtual worship with Community United Methodist Church, Quincy, California. I am Pastor Andrew Davis, the pastor of this wonderful church, and I am glad to have you here with us here in the presence of God, wherever you are and whenever you are worshiping. We're glad that you chose to worship with us today. And so as you will find in your online bulletin, you're welcome to participate as fully as you wish, or you could just sit back with a cup of coffee, cup of tea, water, orange juice. You could even worship in the comfort of your living room or in your pajamas. That's the wonderful thing about virtual worship, because no matter where we are or what time we're worshiping, we are always able to worship God. Amen. And so, as we continue our service this morning, I invite you to turn in the United Methodist Hymnal, page 381, as we sing together, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us, we will sing the first and third verses or the words are printed in your online bulletin. We thank you for being able to worship from all over the world. We thank you, Lord, for our great shepherd, our Savior, who is like a shepherd and will continue to lead us on. So may your Holy Spirit be present with us in this time of worship. May your Holy Spirit move through all of us who receive this message and word today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And so if you have any children, or if you're young at heart, we invite you to gather your children around the screen as we have a special message from Grandma Susie today. Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Grandma Susie, and I'm here today to tell you a story. Do any of you have pets? Dogs or cats? Do you know, I used to have a dog and he recognized my voice, and when I called him, he would come. I fed him when he was hungry, and gave him water when he was thirsty, and sometimes he had to go outside, and I would let him go outside and then bring him back in. He knew that I loved him, and he felt safe with me. Well, Jesus was telling a story about shepherds, and having a pet is almost like being a shepherd, because you have to take care of the sheep, and they recognize your face, and they recognize your voice. So a shepherd 
takes good, good care of the sheep, and they love him and follow him and trust him. Well, Jesus told a story to some men about a shepherd. Now, sheep live in a pen that has a fence around it. And sometimes a shepherd will even sleep right at the gate so that nothing can come in and harm them. And then the shepherd would open the gate and the sheep would come out and he would let all the sheep out and then he would go to the front and he would lead them. He'll lead them to a place where they can eat food. He'll lead them to a place where they can drink water. And then he will lead them to a place where they can rest and feel safe. But sometimes there are bad people that come, like a thief, the sheep thief. He climbs the fence and he tries to get the sheep and he will kill them and steal them. But the shepherd will fight them off. These are bad people. And then sometimes a stranger will come and he will say, Come, little sheep, come and follow me. I will lead you to a place where you can get some really good grass. But do you think the sheep follow the stranger? No way. Something inside them tells them that this is not a good person, so they will not follow a stranger. And sometimes the shepherd is sick or he can't take care of the sheep for a while, so they have what's called a hired hand. Now the hired hand, he takes care of the sheep, I guess, but not really, because he doesn't really love the sheep. He doesn't really care about them. So, if a big bad wolf comes, you think the hired hand is going to stay and take care of the sheep? No way! He's going to run away! He's too scared! And the wolf comes and the wolf wants the sheep. And the sheep are really scared and they scatter. But the shepherd comes. And the shepherd gets his big staff. And he takes that staff and he will beat the wolf until the wolf runs away or dies. See this big stick that, that Jesus is holding here? Jesus is the good shepherd. He does that for us too. This shepherd will gladly lay down his life to protect his sheep because he loves them so much. And Jesus was saying that we're like sheep. We need guidance. And Jesus is there to show us the way and he laid down his life for us so that our sins could be forgiven and we could go to heaven and be with him forever. And that's the story that he was trying to teach us when he was talking about him being the good shepherd. Isn't that wonderful? That Jesus would love us so much and try to protect us and lay down his life for us. Whenever we call him or pray, or read the Bible, we can hear his voice. And he will never, ever let us down because he is the good shepherd and he takes care of us no matter what. Let's say a little prayer together. We'll put Jesus over here. Want to hold him? Dear Father in heaven, thank you for Jesus. Jesus, thank you for coming and for giving your life so that we could be loved and kept in your care forever. Help us to remember that when strangers come or when things, bad things happen, that you are there. You are our shepherd. You are going to take care of us and you're going to forgive us no matter what we do. Dear Father, thank you for all that you give us. And may you bless us always. And may we always look up to and follow Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Thank you, Father. Bye. As we enter into this time of prayer, I invite us to turn to page.
page 473 in the United Methodist Hymnal, or the words in your online bulletin as we sing together, Lead Me, Lord. in stillness and during our prayer time I will leave some space for you to lift up your own prayers in between each petition. And so let us be in prayer. most loving and holy God, we give you thanks for today. We give you thanks for this time together. We give you thanks for the beautiful colors of spring, the green in the valleys, the flowing waters, and all of the new life that is around us. And yet we come to you, Lord, with many things that are on our hearts, as this, today we lift up our medical professionals, our essential workers, we pray for those who are sick, those who have been affected by COVID-19, those who are recovering from surgery, facing surgery, those who are going through cancer treatments, and all of those who are suffering from allergies right now. We ask for your healing presence among each one, Lord. And we ask prayers for the caretakers and doctors and nurses that they may be an extension of your healing presence. up to you, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving, those who are feeling lonely, for those who are feeling isolated, anxious, or stressed. We pray, Lord, for your calming and comforting spirit. We pray for your assurance that we are not alone, that you are our shepherd. We pray, Lord, for the assurance that nothing can separate us from your love. We lift them up to you, O Lord. We pray, O Lord, for our world, our nation, our state, and our community. We lift up the leaders of each, O oh Lord, praying for wisdom and guidance in every decision that is made. We lift them up.
up to you, O Lord. We pray, Lord, for our church, for our bishop, our superintendents, our churches throughout our connection. And we pray for our churches here in Quincy and throughout all the world in the church universal that your Holy Spirit may continue to work through us, continue to empower us to serve you even amidst isolation, knowing that we can still be community and that we can still serve you as the hands and feet of Jesus. Help us to be reassuring to those who are troubled and help us to be your hands and feet in whatever ways we can. We lift them up to you, O oh Lord. And so, Lord, be with us throughout this week and in these days to come. Receive all of these prayers that we have lifted up to you, both the spoken and the unspoken, as you know what is on our hearts. So we leave these prayers in your hands and at your throne of grace. And with disciples from generation to generation, and the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us from temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I want to offer a moment of thanksgiving to all, all of you in our church and even beyond as we have as you know, that as we are not worshiping in place, we are, have asked that tithes and offerings be mailed to the church. And I am very proud to say that everyone has come through in one way or another. And so I just want to offer this time to say thank you to all of you who have helped to support our ministries in one way or another. And even though we are, our buildings are going to be closed for another month or more, we still have opportunities to be in mission to our community, and around us. And so I do want to lift up a couple items that we have to offer. As you've, if you've visited our Facebook page recently, we have what's called the Lost Sierra Food Project that is posted on there. And the Lost Sierra Food Project provides weekly produce boxes for participants who are low income, which many are out of work right now. And the recipients can then volunteer either for nine hours on the farm, participate in three cooking classes with local chefs from here, or pay a subsidized amount. And we also are inviting people to donate to this cause as well, as there is a link on the Facebook page in which we can donate. And any amount helps. And this is a wonderful opportunity to help our community. In addition, if you are crafty or good at sewing or even can follow the basics. We are inviting people to make face masks as the Plumas Crisis Intervention Resource Center, who we are partnered with and providing assistance to our community, is in need of face masks. And so we also have several people here in the church that are making face masks. So if anybody in the church needs a face mask, please let the church office know and we will kick that to Sandra and Carolyn. And finally, if we, Community Assistance Network, a.k.a. CAN, can always use donations as well. And so if you wish to make any donations, you're invited to make donations to them as well. And so these are some of our offerings that we have, both mission and gifts that we have. And remember that no gift is too small. And so if you do wish to continue to contribute to our ministry, you're invited to mail checks to our post office box, 766 Quincy, California, 
95971. And always remember that whether it's monetary, whether it's mission, God loves a joyful giver. And so let us be in prayer as we offer thank you, a thank you to God for these gifts and offerings. Holy and loving God, we thank you for these opportunities to connect and grow and serve. We thank you, Lord, for the gifts that are helping to sustain us. May we use them for good around our community and around our world. And may your Holy Spirit energize us to continue to serve in whatever way you call us. So we offer all of these gifts and opportunities to you, O Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first reading comes from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Bible lesson comes from John 10, verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep do not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Judy, for the readings. Let us be in prayer. Loving and holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. And may your Holy Spirit work through me as we hear this message today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, as we continue the season of Easter, we come to what many refer to today as Shepherd's Sunday, in which all of the texts in the Revised Common Lectionary, which are the set of assigned readings for the global church, all pertain to shepherds and sheep. Well, the shepherd metaphor is one that is particularly timely today. As we continue sheltering in place until further notice, and because many of us have been feeling scared, anxious, stressed, depressed. Perhaps we need a word of assurance today and to look to our shepherd, Jesus Christ. There is still a great deal of the unknown that we are facing. And yeah, we're still going to have those feelings of fear, anxiety, depression, and stress. Yet when we feel that way, this is when we can dip into the deep resources of our faith. Just as we heard in Psalm 23, we can look to our shepherd. 
Well, oftentimes read at memorial services, the 23rd Psalm is a psalm of comfort. Its uplifting words are well-known and beloved. And it's an example of how we can look to the shepherd. I've mentioned before that in past sermons that my Aunt Linda, who now lives in Wisconsin, has a little plaque. And on that plaque is a woodcut of Jesus carrying a lamb on his shoulders. And on that plaque it says, The Lord is my shepherd. Well, it's hard to miss, as she usually has it in her dining room. And when I spent Thanksgiving with her in Tennessee, my last two years of seminary, it was a reminder that the shepherd watches over us, but that we too can look to the shepherd. It's a reminder to anyone who visits her home that the Lord is my shepherd. A reminder that looking to the shepherd wherever we are and has a place in every home that she has lived in. It's a reminder that we have a shepherd in Jesus and that God is present and watching over us and all of the time, even when life gets messy. Well, just as the shepherd watches the sheep, the shepherd watches over each of us as well, as the shepherd knows our voices, and we can hear the shepherd's voice too. One of the mornings I stepped outside this week on the little balcony in my home, and so where I live is a bunch of pasture land in the back, and clear stream runs through it. Well, right now everything is so lush and green and it's a joy to hear the birds singing and hearing the sounds of geese and sandhill cranes out in the field. And the words of Psalm 23 come to mind. He leadeth me beside green pastures or through clear water and flowing streams. Well, even this week, I had the treat of brass music from across the field, which was a nice mood lifter. And even in the midst of sheltering place, we don't have to look far to see the beauty around us, to see such a pastoral scene like we get in Psalm 23. And it takes just a looking around and seeing those signs to bring a sense of peace. I know for me, when my soul is troubled, I just have to look around and see the snow-capped mountain, or the colors of spring, or the green pasture. And that does bring a sense of peace and calm my soul. Or if you ever go out to Gansner Park, out here, or anywhere you live, if there's water around, just take a moment next to a creek, a lake, a river, and just listen to the cool, flowing water. Talk about restoring the soul. Because I, I know for me, I find water very restoring too. Just the sound of it. And even when we look around this beautiful place that we live here in Quincy, and when we look to the shepherd, we can hold on to goodness and mercy in our hearts. We can find comfort, even in our darkest times, by looking to the shepherd. When looking to the shepherd and following Jesus, Jesus tells us how he knows each of his sheep and how the sheep know his voice, even amidst the wolves and thieves that come to steal or kill. And we do have enough wolves and thieves out there. Distractions, negative noise, forces of wickedness and evil that are active in this world around us. Which is why it's so important even more to look to the shepherd, to look to Jesus. See, he's the gate to the pasture. And by going through that gate, we can find safety, rest, and peace from all of that negative noise around us. When we find ourselves feeling really down, particularly grieving the loss of the life that we once knew, or when we face the unknown that we are still facing, or when we start to feel afraid, anxious, stressed, angry, sad, or depressed, that's when we need to look to the shepherd, hear the voice of the shepherd, and find comfort in the shepherd. 
While looking to the shepherd won't necessarily make all our problems or what ails us go away, looking to the shepherd can give us a sense of peace and an assurance that we are not alone. That's when we dip into the deep resources of our faith. Even if our faith is just the size of a mustard seed. The good news is that we have a Savior and a shepherd in Jesus who watches over us and cares for us, giving us peace in the midst of the chaos that life can bring us at times. Well, over this last month and a half and in the days to come, looking to the shepherd has become paramount. Our church council right now is experiencing what it's like to be shepherds as, we, as I have them helping me out in pastoral care of the congregation. By watching over the congregation or segments of according to their neighborhoods or geographical areas and then relaying any needs back to me. And even while shepherding the church, all of us look to Jesus as our ultimate shepherd. Even when we feel like we're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, when we start hearing that negative noise, yet we don't have to fear evil. We don't have to fear wickedness. We don't have to fear life being disrupted and altered at the present. Because it's like the virus that has been the thief that has climbed into the pasture through another way to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, I'm going to admit that I was hoping that we were going to be back to worshiping face-to-face -face this by now. Yet I don't know when that's going to happen. As we've been, we haven't exactly been given a timetable. And even when we are able to worship together again, it's going to be something different. It's going to look a lot different than it did, at least until we develop an immunity to the virus, or until the scientist can find a vaccine. As we continue sheltering in grace, practicing physical distancing, thoroughly washing our hands, and wearing our face coverings at the store, the post office, or in large public spaces, keep looking to the shepherd. We still have a ways to go, and I know that this is getting old. But we can be assured that we are not alone by looking to Jesus, the Good Shepherd, and trusting in God while relying on the Holy Spirit to guide us through all of the mountains and valleys that we face in life. So let's continue dining in the presence of our enemy, or in the case of this virus, continue to support our local restaurants by ordering takeout when we can, and maybe even sing an alleluia in the face of this virus. Let's not live in fear either. Let us resist the forces of wickedness and evil, and let us keep looking to the shepherd each step of the way. As we spend some time in reflection throughout this week, and if you wish to share in the comments below on this video, how are you looking to the shepherd during this time? Where do you see goodness and mercy happening around you? And what is bringing you comfort and peace right now? I look forward to interacting this week, and I offer this to you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let the church say, Amen. As we prepare to go forth, and as we prepare to get back to our regular activities of the day, I invite us to turn to page 138 in the United Methodist Hymnal, or the words in your online bulletin as we sing together, The King of Love My Shepherd Is, and we will sing the first, second, and sixth verses.
continue with our day, let us go forth fed and nourished, led by the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. And so whenever we feel anxious, stressed, depressed, or sad, let us look to the Shepherd. Let us look to the Shepherd in everything that we do. Let us look to the Shepherd everywhere that we go. And so may God be with us. May God walk with us. May God guide our hands and hold our hands and stand by us and guide our feet. And so let us go in the goodness of Christ, with goodness and mercy forever. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen.